It was a hot July morning on Gosling Farm. Most of the pigs basked in the sunshine. The clever pigs, like Sydney, stayed cool. Sydney had found a splendid place in the shade between the pig sheds and the hedge to Top Acre Field. He'd also found a gap under the wire which he was slowly making bigger with his snout. When Stan and Little Red Tractor drove into the field, all the pigs, except for Sydney, ran towards them. Come on, Sydney, shouted Stan as he tipped food into the trough. If you're not quick, you miss breakfast. Sydney ambled over and Stan emptied the last bucket into the trough. Stan scratched Sydney's back. You're a funny old chap, Sydney, he said. The older you get, the funnier you get. Sydney grunted. He liked having his back scratched. Later, Stan and Little Red Tractor drove down to the river. The cows watched contentedly as they chewed the cud in Riverside Field. But on the river bank, the ducks waddled about looking very unhappy. Stan stopped Little Red Tractor in the shade of Auntie Ellie's willow. Patch leapt out of the cab and soon found out what was wrong. She wanted to have a swim, but there was lots of weed and hardly any water. Never mind, Patch, said Stan. The boat should be coming to cut the weed soon. But how the weed will float away, I don't know. I've never seen the river as low as this. Stan left Little Red Tractor to cool off and walked along the river bank to Whistling Bridge. In the middle of the river, a big mud bank had appeared. You'll never be able to swim in that, Stan. Stan looked up to see Dudley, the postman, looking down at him from the bridge. I don't want to swim, Dudley, said Stan, but it would be nice to see the ducks enjoying themselves. I've never seen the river so low. It's Wrigglesworth Mill, said Dudley. They're doing some repair work and the river is being held back until they finish. Well, that's all very well, said Stan, but I've got unhappy ducks and goodness knows what's going to happen to the weed when they come along to cut it. Now's your chance to find out, said Dudley. Stan looked across the river to see the weed cutter's truck moving slowly over the rough ground on Goat Common. Stan said goodbye to Dudley and walked back along the bank. Morning, Steve. Morning, Paul, he shouted. Morning, Stan, Steve called back. What have you done to the river? My ducks drank it all, said Stan. Steve and Paul laughed. It's a good job you don't keep camels, said Paul. Will you be able to cut the weeds with the river as low as this? asked Stan. The boat's no problem, said Steve. It's got a flat bottom and doesn't need a lot of water to float in. The problem's going to be getting rid of the weed. What usually happens to it? asked Stan. We let it float down to Wrigglesworth Mill, said Paul. We put poles across the river to trap the weeds in the shallows, then we lift it up by tractor. But well, couldn't you put the poles across by Whistling Bridge? asked Stan. Then a little red tractor could lift the weed out for you. That would be marvellous, Stan, said Steve. That means we can cut upstream from here right up to Tolborough Mill. You can put the weed on your muck heap to rot, then spread it on your fields, said Paul. Very good for the soil. Sounds like a good idea all round then, said Stan. When do we start? Right away, said Steve. We'll have this boat in the water in a jiffy. Then we'll shoot over to Riddlesworth Mill to fetch the poles. Stan and Patch watched as Steve backed the weed cutting boat down a shallow bank and into the river. Paul, who had waders on, helped the boat float off the trailer and pulled it to the bank. Stan waved as Steve and Paul drove off to Riddlesworth Mill to get the poles. Come on, little red tractor, said Stan. This will never do. We've got the pig sheds to clean out.
Cleaning out the pig sheds was hot and thirsty work, but Stan loaded all the dirty straw onto the trailer before he sat on Little Red Tractor's front wheel for a rest and a drink of lemonade. A hawk worked the hedge between the pig field and beach farm. Stan watched as it hovered and swooped and completely missed the large shape moving down the hedge behind him. Sydney had escaped. By the time Stan drove Little Red Tractor with his heavy load to the muck heap, Sydney was sauntering down the lane. An hour later, when Steve and Paul returned with the poles, Stan and Little Red Tractor were ready to pull them across the river. Steve tied them into position. Then Stan and Steve watched as Paul started the weed cutting boat's engine, lowered the cutters and began to cut the weed. It is some time before all the weed floats down, said Steve. Time for me to fix the forks onto Little Red Tractor, asked Stan. Plenty of time, replied Steve. And while you're doing that, I'll walk under the bridge to see what the weed is like down by Marshy Wood. Cheery over now, called Stan, as Steve splashed through the shallow water under Whistling Bridge. Stan patted Little Red Tractor on the bonnet. Come on then, little red tractor, he said. There's more work to be done. Let's go and put those forks on. But as Stan climbed into the cab, he heard a loud yell. Uh -huh. Then Steve ran out from under the bridge and scrambled up the bank. Whatever's the matter? asked Stan. You look as if you've seen a ghost. I, I, I have, stammered Steve. It's a, a, under the b b bridge. It, it's grey and it, it's enormous and it, it makes a t t t t terrible snorting noise. Well, I never, said Stan. I've never seen anything like that under Whistling Bridge. Let's take a look. You, you, you can go if you, you, you like, said Steve. I've seen it, I, I can tell you, I, I don't, I, I, I like it. All right then, said Stan. You stay here and look after Little Red Tractor. Patch will come with me, won't you, Patch? Patch jumped down from her favourite place in Little Red Tractor's cab and ran past Stan and started barking. <coughs> what is it, Patch? shouted Stan. Stan peered into the gloom. He could see Patch, but he couldn't see what she was barking at. Then he saw it. It was an enormous grey shape, struggling to get out of the mud. The grey monster lurched towards them, and suddenly Patch's tail started to wag. She stopped barking, and Stan began to laugh. <laughs> you can come down, Steve, he called. It's nothing to worry about. Stan and Patch emerged from under the bridge, followed by a large, mud-covered pig. Your ghost was Sydney, laughed Stan. I think he's been rolling in the mud to give himself some protection from the sun. A pig using mud as sun protection cream, said Steve, who was feeling a little bit silly. Now I've heard everything. <coughs> Sydney grunted and lurched towards Stan to have his back scratched. Not now, Sydney, <coughs> shouted Stan. But Sydney moved closer, and as Stan moved back to avoid the muddy pig, he stepped on one of the poles. His welly slipped along the pole. He swayed, did the splits, and fell flat on his face in the mud. <coughs> now it was Steve's turn to laugh. I'll tell you one thing, Stan, he chortled. You may not get sunburnt now you're using Sydney's sun protection cream, but I bet your face has turned a bit red under all that mud, hey? <laughs> ah, what's this? 
It looks like the real weed cutters. But I wonder where their boat is. Ah, here it is. They left it where they finished cutting weed yesterday. They normally work with two boats, but here, in the upper reaches of the river, it's too narrow. It doesn't take them long to get the boat ready. And with the engine started, Paul lowers the cutters and he's off. floats downstream where it's caught on poles in a shallow part of the river and pulled out by tractor. If the weed is left in the water for too long, after it's been cut, it will start to poison the fish. Keeping the rivers clear of weed is an important job, so Steve and Paul are kept busy all through the summer and well into the autumn. I think they must enjoy driving around in their little boats, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> 